third seminar in the Spotlight Seminar Series, Getting the Most Out of Google. This seminar is going to set you straight on the often confusing topic of how Google works and how to get your websites to perform better in Google search. We're going to explain the main strategies that you can employ to optimize your performance in search. We're going to caution you about common pitfalls. We're also going to discuss how you can leverage Google to get more leads, including strategies that you can implement today with no technical background required. So the internet is massive. It's so big that my little brain has no way of even grasping the vastness of the web. Google has made its, jo made its, its job to organize and collate the web, and they've done a great job. They make it very easy to find what you're looking for, and they're good at finding good quality websites and siphoning off the stuff that you don't want. Google search is nearly ubiquitous. They're such a dominant player in the space that most web searches on most devices, that's including desktops, tablets, handheld devices, cars, airport kiosks even, they're all handled by Google. This is a lot of power for one company, for one search tool to have. It's kind of funny how the internet has taken over our lives over the past couple of decades. Just think about how you make consumer purchases these days. I'm not talking about your regular essentials like groceries, but true consumer purchases. If you're anything like me, and you're looking to buy a larger ticket item, like let's say like a TV, the first thing that I do is I research it online. I go to Google and I type in something like best flat screen TV. Google sifts through millions, if not billions of web pages in a fraction of a second, and gives me what it thinks will help me make my decision as to what TV I want. If you're a TV retailer or manufacturer, getting beneficial content near the top of Google when people like me are trying to find the best TV on the market, that can easily lead to thousands upon thousands of sales. It's even more crucial for smaller businesses. Just ask any local restaurant how important it is to be highly rated on a site like TripAdvisor and show up highly ranked in local Google searches. Real estate is not much different, and yet it is. Google is important in some respects, and in others, its importance is overstated. I'm going to try and filter through all the stuff you may have heard and try and give you a better understanding on how Google works and how it doesn't. First, I want you to unlearn everything you've learned. I've talked to agents about Google on many occasions. And one thing I've quickly come to realize is that a lot of what they think is right is just straight up wrong. Part of the problem is because Google today isn't what Google was 10 years ago, and information and the way Google works gets outdated quickly. But part of the larger problem is that because of the importance of Google search and the relative tech mystery that surrounds Google, there are a lot of snake oil salesmen out there trying to take advantage of people just like you on a daily basis. Now, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of great consulting companies out there that can help with optimizing your business or search but it's sometimes it's hard to hear the truth through all of the noise. So let's filter out the noise. I'm first going to start by going over the best practices to get your content as high up in Google as possible, as well as things, I'm going to go over things that may hurt you in Google as well. Then we're going to evaluate that advice and apply it to the real estate industry. To quickly sum out, to quickly sum up, how to do well on Google, the easiest way to conceptualize where you should start is by thinking about what Google's goals are. As I mentioned before, Google's job is to provide the best resources to its users for any given search query or question. Ultimately, all the tips I'm going to be giving you today will be trying to help Google achieve that goal, but with your web pages and content. Which brings me to my most important tip. You want to generate good content on your web pages. You'd be surprised how many people ignore this. Google is really good at figuring out just what content is on a page and even how well it's written. Google's job is to find the best information for a given search query. So by keeping this in mind and generating content to achieve this goal, you're helping your cause and performing well in Google search. And it's not just about throwing up a few pages of prepared content. 
you need to constantly be adding new, fresh, and most importantly, unique content on a regular basis. Google is really good at identifying sites that aren't updated regularly. And they know just as well as we do that old information on the web, it gets stale quickly. And please, please, please make sure when you're producing content for a website, you're not copying and pasting or even just copying and pasting, but changing a couple of words from different source material. Google is surprisingly efficient at catching duplicate content, even if it's slightly different than another web page. Google penalizes duplicate content. And when this happens, the content you're generating is doing more harm than good. And the second big no-no is keyword stuffing. This is a common practice. And in the 90s, this was actually a good way to boost your, so your search engine ranking. However, Google is a lot smarter than search engines were in the 90s. My advice, if you're targeting certain search terms, definitely don't go out of your way to repeat certain words over and over again. Google keeps an eye out for this, and it can hurt your cause more than help it. Yes, it's still a good idea to have key search terms in your content, but avoid spamming them in your content. The second most important tip is to establish clout on the web. What do I mean by clout? Ultimately, you want other websites referencing your website as a source. As soon as another site puts a link to your page on theirs, they're giving you clout. The more clout you have, the more respect you get from Google. That being said, and one thing I can't stress enough, all clout isn't equal. By the way, these references from other sites years, they're typically called backlinks. Google prioritizes quality over quantity when it's evaluating your web page's backlinks. If you have just one backlink from the front page of a website like CBC, it far surpasses thousands of backlinks that you get from the backwater recesses of the internet. As a matter of fact, too many poor quality backlinks are likely to hurt your cause. A lot of companies out there peddle guaranteed SEO with thousands of qualified backlinks. I've seen many agents and companies waste their money on these so-called SEO companies. And in the end, yes, you may get these backlinks, but no, it's not going to help your performance in Google. These qualified backlinks are typically from link farms, which are sites that are purely set up just to produce links to other websites. Google easily identifies these sites, and it's not too much of a stretch to assume that Google's going to downgrade your site if too many of your backlinks come from link farms. So backlinks are important to improve your clout, and the more well-respected the site that's backlinking you, the better. Really, when it boils down to it, it's just these two sweeping factors that you need to consider when trying to optimize your websites for Google search. There are a lot of tiny little nuances and strategies for achieving these goals and achieving them effectively. I'm not going to go into those here. Just if you keep these in mind, though, you'll find that you're going to be doing a lot better in search. If, you're gen if your website is generally generating good quality content regularly and has a lot of cloud on the web, you're really going to find that your site will start performing well with Google. Okay, so that's great. Now, how do I, as a real estate professional, leverage this knowledge? I'm going to discuss this shortly, but first I want to make sure that everyone has a clear understanding of how real estate content is generally found on the internet, because Google isn't the only player in town. And for some aspects of real estate, Google isn't even the primary discovery search tool, sorry, this primary discovery tool on the internet. This is a very important distinction which is why I want to stress this before diving too deep onto the strategies to perform well on Google. At the end of the day, what you're looking for is leads from people discovering your content on the internet. And understanding how those leads are coming in is the first step to efficiently capturing a larger market share of those leads. So let's get into the mindset of your average Joe who's actively looking for properties on the internet. And let's assume that they don't have any agent representation. Where do you think they're going to go to look for properties? Most people don't go to Google. In Canada, they go to Realtor.ca or a similar real estate search website like Century21.ca. These websites are much better equipped to find properties for sale in an area that match your search criteria than Google. 
and they easily have the dominant market share when it comes to real estate discovery. Now let's assume that this average Joe takes their level of interest to the next level. They're looking for an agent. How do most people find agents online? Many will find agents by seeing them on active listings they've come across. Maybe they like the marketing or they're coming across their name frequently. So they put that agent on the short list of agents they're going to investigate further, likely investigating them using Google. Maybe they find agents in a similar way that I shot for TVs. Maybe they ask Google something like, real estate agents Vancouver. That's something that I'd search. Either way, there's a good chance that Google is involved. So there are two general real estate related discovery routes. Most property searches are done through sites like realtor.ca. Most agent or real estate information research is done through Google. This is an important distinction because it helps you decide where to focus your Google optimization efforts. Now, most agents have two main types of website resources online that generate leads. They have active listing web pages like your property page on Spotlight or century21.ca or realtor.ca as an example, and agent websites that typically have information about the agent, the communities they service, maybe an IDX or a blog or another real estate search tool. We're going to look at these two individually and examine how they're impacted by Google because it, it can differ greatly. So I'm going to start with the listing web page, mostly because it's what we create as part of the Spotlight program, but also because the understanding of how Google interfaces with these web pages isn't as straightforward. As an agent, when you have an active listing on MLS, it's very likely that it's going to live on the internet somewhere. You likely have a listing web page on Realtor.ca, Century21.ca, or Spotlight. And if you pay for enhanced marketing, like through the Spotlight program, you might also have a listing web page or a virtual tour page hosted on the internet. A lot of agents are obsessed with getting their sites to the top of Google. And I'm here to tell you that it's not nearly as important as most agents perceive it to be. Remember our two routes of discovery. The vast majority of real estate listing discovery isn't done through Google. If you're looking for a house for sale in Vancouver, you're not likely to Google house for sale in Vancouver or even Googling house for sale between $750,000 and $1 million with three bedrooms and three bathrooms in Vancouver. Because you know as well as I do, and so does the public, that Google won't give you the results that are helpful in the way that a site like Realtor.ca or Century21.ca would. Our statistics show that for most listings, only about 1% of the visitors coming in are coming in through search, whereas the rest come in through other websites or through direct entry. And virtually all of the search terms that lead to visits are from people Googling the specific address of the home. That being said, those users discovering your listing through Google, they're important because they're hot leads. They're interested enough in your listing that they Googled the house's address, which means they're specifically interested in your property. So while it's not a ton of traffic, it's still important to capture it by optimizing your listing's presence on Google. It's important to understand how this works because it is extremely difficult to achieve top rank on Google for your listing web pages, and you want to be able to manage your client's expectations, especially if you aren't number one on Google. One of the most common things I hear from agents when they're asking me about Google is, why isn't my listing number one on Google? After all, I'm the listing agent. Shouldn't I have top priority on Google? And yes, as a listing agent, I think it would be fair that you should have number one rank on Google when someone searches the property's address. However, this is easier said than done. You've got a lot of factors working against you. Google doesn't know that your website is the one put on by you, the listing agent. And first off, you're not the only show in town. As soon as you broker load a listing, your listing's data is generally publicly available. All major real estate franchises like Century21.ca, Remax, Royal LePage, they're all going to be creating listing web pages for your listing, all with the same data. There's also third party companies out there that have been cropping up across the country. They also create listing web pages for publicly available listings. Even worse, when you're listing a condo unit, there may be dozens of other listings that share the exact same street address. All these separate web pages are fighting for that coveted top spot on Google and it really is a dogfight for the top spot. All the listing information is more or less the same, 
typically comes down to so it's, so it typically comes down to a timing game. Which listing and web page was indexed by Google first? Not posted first, but crawled and indexed by Google first. This is an important distinction because Google may know a site exists, but it may not index it for a period of days. To make matters worse, these listing web pages, they aren't permanent. They're only online for a period measured in days or maybe weeks. And it often takes Google search time to settle or figure out which content is the authoritative source. A lot of weight is given to whom is indexed first, but backlinks to listing web pages are important as well, as well as some of the content on the page. So how can I win this dogfight? There's no simple solution, but there are definitely are ways to help. And the Spotlight program particularly takes care of a lot of this for you. Now, I mentioned timing is important because the first to be indexed is crucial. So how can you achieve this? Well, you're the listing agent. The listing data is yours and you have it in your possession before you broker load it to MLS. So take advantage of the fact. Before you broker load onto MLS, Create your listings web pages and make sure they're indexable by Google. This is exactly what we do with the listing web pages we generate for you at Spotlight. When you order your marketing package, you give us the basic listing information. We take the photos, we put them online, and we focus on getting the web page indexed before the floodgates open once it's posted to MLS. And if you're not using Spotlight, you're all Century 21 agents. Manually inputting your listings into online office early so there's a better chance of getting indexed first is a great strategy. You've got the opportunity to win the race to Google before everyone else can start. So make sure you use it. The next piece of advice to win this dogfight is advertise everywhere you can. Again, these are services provided by Spotlight in an effort to boost your listings web page rank on Google. But the theory applies even if you aren't using us to market your listing. Post your listing's web page on other websites to get some more coveted backlinks. Post your listing publicly on Facebook or Twitter. Mention your listing web page on your blog. Post it to Kijiji and Craigslist. Make sure that you use a virtual tour link in your on your board and on online office. Wherever you post your listing, don't forget to include a link back to your listing's web page. Because by doing so, that's how you're creating more backlinks to your listings web page and ultimately bring it further up in search. These all might not be super high quality backlinks, but what we found is even a few will help. This is because most of the other competition that's trying to create a listing web page for you, they don't have any backlinks to their listing web pages. So it gives you an unfair advantage. And remember, sometimes you can do everything right and you still might not be number one on Google the first day you hit the market. You may not even be number one after all the search results have settled after a few days on the market. But I can tell you one thing, all of these strategies definitely help. Temper your expectations and your client expectations going in. Explain to your clients the importance of Google for their listings, but don't promise number one. Focus your efforts on doing well on Google, but understand that it's not the end of the world if your listing web pages aren't at the top of your searches. If you can speak knowledgeably on the subject and convey this information to your client, you'll find that the client will understand the situation. And at the end of the day, they'll be a happy client. Now let's look at the other web presence I mentioned, agent websites. So I mentioned earlier, these sites have the largest potential to benefit from Google. And unlike the very short-lived listing web pages, these agent websites, they're permanent. So any Google boost you give to your content on these pages, it'll pay off continually and for a long period of time. While the Spotlight program doesn't currently produce agent websites, as a Century 21 agent, you've automatically got a great website hosted through century21.ca, or you might have even purchased your own custom domain and website through a third party. So these are techniques you might want to employ. So referring back to the two tips I mentioned earlier, generate good content in establishing clout on the web. Let's see how we can achieve them, starting with generating good content. So you need to generate good content. You want it to be unique, 
And by unique, I mean not plagiarized, in your own words. You want it to be relevant content so that you're going to show up in Google searches that make sense. Ideally, you want to generate content for topics there's not a ton of information already out there for. So you're not competing against a lot of other websites for the same Google search terms. So what's the best way to do this? Start a blog. It may sound like a lot of work, but blog posts, they don't have to be novels. They can be a few sentences or paragraphs, that's it. Are you already generating a newsletter for your sphere of influence? Do you read a lot of industry articles and have some opinions that you could voice in a blog post format? Publish it. Don't keep it to yourself. Generate the content and put it up on your website. The more content you create, the more entry points you'll have for Google into your web presence. This works even better if you can hyper target, sorry, target hyper specific topics. Maybe you have a farm area. Talk about the community events and news. Discuss local issues. Write up blurbs on the different neighborhoods in the community. Everything helps. It may take time to start reaping the benefits of generating content, but if you stick with it, you can carve out a niche on it for yourself on the web. Just remember to be patient. This isn't instant gratification. I've talked to agents who have employed the strategy successfully, and while it started out slow, they're now easily generating more leads than they can handle. It's something that you can do as well. Also, when you're generating content, try and keep in mind what your goal is. It's to generate leads. You need to employ a strategy to get readers to contact you. Make sure you make it easy to do this. Put a contact form on all your pages or encourage readers to get in touch with you. Engage your audience. Respond to comments. Earn their trust. Get social with them. Anytime you get a reader to engage with you, you're generating a prospective lead. So maybe you thought about blogging, but you don't know where to start. It's great because as a Century 21 agent, you've got access to century21.ca and online office. Century 21 provides the tools required to help get your blog started. They've got great resources. And they synergize with your already existing agent website on Century 21. It's a nice and easy, low barrier of entry platform. Not to mention that your Century 21 website already comes baked in with listing search and leads capture. Alternatively, however, if you've paid for a third party website, the best thing to do is to contact your provider. They likely have a blogging module that you can add onto your site. And if neither of these solutions work for you, if they don't have a blogging platform that they can tack onto your site, there's also great free blogging platforms out there like WordPress, Tumblr, Blogger. There's a million of them out there. So once you start generating content, you should also start employing strategies to increase your clout. You have to remember that content and clout go hand in hand. You need to work on both of these elements in unison to get any benefit. This is usually where most agents falter. If you generate a lot of content, but you're not generating clout, your website will sit in the dark corner of the web forever, collecting dust, no matter how great your content. So how do we generate clout? There's some pretty tried and true methods to do this. Some probably mesh with activities you're already performing in your day-to-day -day business, but you may not be leveraging them to boost your web clout. Let's assume you've generated some content. Maybe you've even started a blog. Let people know about it. If you use social media, and you definitely should if you're trying to boost your web presence, post links to your content on social media. Mention to your family, friends, coworkers that you're writing content and to check it out. If you lean on your close contacts, especially your family and friends, you'll find that because they're tied to you emotionally and they want to see you succeed in life, there's a good chance that they're going to share, like, repost, retweet your content, extending it to their circle of friends. Remember, Google indexes social media sites, so the more people that are referencing your information, the more clout you're generating for your content. Likely, you're not the only one you know generating real estate related content. You can leverage other content creators in a scratch my back, I'll scratch yours scenario. Write a guest post on their blog. Get them to write one on yours. Link to some of their posts, promote their blog, and ask them to do the same to yours. Everyone creating content's in the same boat. They're all trying to get backlinks. 
you'd be surprised how many people are receptive to the idea of helping each other out in this manner. Where you can really increase your clout is by getting backlinks from well-respected websites. You involved in the community? Do you help out with, sponsor, or plan community events? Make sure that you have a link to your content or web page on any community sites that you can. If it's an event that you're involved in, write some content about the event on your website or your blog, and then mention it to whomever is in charge of the event website, and see if you can get them to feature your post or, your, or at least your blog on their web page. Most event planners are looking for that extra exposure on the internet, and they should be more than happy to oblige. So you're also a real estate agent, so you're likely an A-type personality that likes to talk. There are a lot of popular podcasts out there and local radio shows. They're all likely looking for guests that have expertise in the real estate industry. Contact them. Tell them you like the show and that you'd, like, you'd be interested in being a guest. Not only are you going to expose yourself to their audience, but you're also likely to get a link to your blog or website from their webpage they have about the episode that you're on. When you're engaged in your day-to-day -day activities, always be thinking about promoting yourself and your website. You don't have to be sleazily pandering your blog to everyone you meet. Just subtly make sure that they know that it's something that you do and let them know that they should check it out. So all of these solutions here are a good place to start if you want to increase the clout of, clout of your content. And remember, they might not lead directly to backlinks on your website, but they're all going to help promote your website. And the more popular it gets, the more organic backlinks you're going to start producing. Once your content starts gaining traction, you're going to start finding that people that you don't even know will start referencing your content. People will start coming to you to ask if they can guest on your blog. Podcasts and radio shows will be calling you to see if you can make a guest appearance on their show. Other people will be sharing your content on social media, and it will go viral without you even doing anything. Things can snowball very quickly once you reach that critical mass. But just like making a snowball, you need to make sure that you've got some snow to get you started. So that concludes the prepared portion of the seminar. 